whatever happened. <laughs> well, now, I had some last minute things I really needed to do. Like, I noticed my rotary blade was like hardly cutting. <laughs> so I had to quickly change that real quick and then put it in this thingy. And uh, my rotary cutter's broken, so uh, when I take the blade out, I have to be super careful not to break the darn thing anymore. So, yeah, I, I'm trying to, like, do things and then, you know, rush to come on live stream. Anyway, hi, guys. I'm Tiffany. Welcome to my quilting life. Today's Sunday, so Sunday, where I will hopefully get started sewing this Sunday. And I just nicked my knee on a ruler you under this it? table. You <laughs> yeah. So let's see who's all here. I know a lot of people were in pretty darn early, like almost an hour early into the chat on some of them. Let's see who's all here. We got Diane, Karen, Samantha, Donna, Martha, Glenda, Marlene, Carla, Lisa, DeBrant, Helen, Leslie, Sharon, uh, Kim, uh, Donna, Joanne, Joyce, Teresa, Linda, another Donna, Karen, Laura, Jim, and so many, many, many more. So welcome all of you. If I didn't uh, say your name, hello. Um, if you guys are new to my channel and don't know on live streams, the people with the blue highlighted name and a wrench next to it, those are my moderators. Some of them have channels. Some of them are just there to keep you all in line. <laughs> So today, as the title says, I am going to make my weave it pattern, except I'm going to make it from memory because I don't know where my, my actual written directions that only I can understand are in this room. I have no idea where they were put because I made that pattern before we moved the room around and painted and, you know, everything like that. So I have no idea where my instructions are. So hopefully if memory serves me right, I can do this quilt and hopefully make the whole top in a video so you guys can see during this live stream. It is a real quick make. Great for a baby, great for a throw or a quick gift, just things like that. I try to make a whole quilt in one video sometimes. So today is going to be one of those days. So for the Weave It quilt today, I have three and a quarter yards of background fabric. Obviously this is a bolt of it and there's more than three and a quarter here, but I will pull off as I need because I didn't feel like pre-cutting how much I needed. So I just pulled the whole bolt. Then we are using, and I don't know if you can find this still, maybe you can, but I'm not gonna put a link for it, but it's a Timeless Treasures Tonga Treats 42 piece. This is how the Tonga Treats do their uh, charm packs is this long package here and it's batiks. Usually the Tonga treats are batiks there. That's what they are. Um, so it's 42 pieces and they're in the green and purples colorway. So I have dose of them. So two charm packs, three and a quarter yards, and that's going to make the top. I mean, it's really easy to do. So, and I'm actually going to on this one, since I am doing it from memory, um, I feel a sneeze coming. <laughs> yeah, you can, it can hit the explanation pattern anytime during this video and find out about the original video, you know, because that video has over 300,000 views. So I figured why not make it again? Because it was a very loved pattern. But, um, <laughs> uh, I really feel a sneeze coming on. Sorry guys. Charm packs, question mark, is it a jelly roll, Chris? Question mark. No, charm, it's charm packs. It's made with charm packs, not a jelly roll. Unless you want to make a really small version, then you can use a jelly roll. And this pattern literally can be upsized. You can do it with 10 inch squares. Everything is in half. So you would cut your 10 inch squares in half. Um, if you were doing a jelly roll, your two and a half inch strips would be cut into two and a half inch squares and you would be using half of those for all the half cuts. So it would be one and a quarter inch. So that would make a small wall hanging size. This makes the perfect baby quilt size. I haven't experimented with the expansion of it. So. Updates for the week. 
I don't. Oh, yeah. Updates for this week. Everybody's, mostly everybody's mayo went out. There's still a few of you need to pay from last week's video from when I did the D stash. And um, we did have delays with the post office. So if your shipping was late, it's because the post office did not have internet for three days. Um, what else? Uh, so, and then the Etsy shop has been updated. So everything that you saw last week on, so Sunday, anything that's still available is in the Etsy shop. So you can type in explanation Etsy and it should bring up the Etsy shop and, uh, you can go see actual still shots. It's horrible photography, let me tell you, but it hor you know, it horrible as the shots are, you can still see what quilts I have Don't available. <laughs> All right, so I have decided today with this, oh, can you turn the iron on now? These batiks have been folded in here so long that they are um, sticking up funny. Uh, I have decided with today's that I'm going to do this in like a color gradation. So I'm going to take all the green fabrics and have them on one side of that center 25 patch block and then the purples on the opposite side. And then when I do the weave it part, which is the borders that looks like it's a woven border, I'm actually going to put purples on the one side and greens on the opposite side. I think that will look really appealing. So I'm going to try something new. I do need to press these though real quick, at least this amount, because as you can see, they are folded and stuck folded. <laughs> Just push it all back. <laughs> Oh, and this pile needs to be pushed back from here. It got messed up too. Just get that to be flat. So what I'm going to do is it looks like there is two of each. So I'm just going to stack them together while he's pressing those. Looks like there's two of each color from each um, of the two bundles. So I'm going to go ahead and separate them so that I can. Oh, Katie, thank you so much. You, don't, you do not need to do that, but thank you. It's very much appreciated. Uh, that way I can pull from the gradient order of things. Ooh, and I hate when this happens too. You get a piece and there's a little piece in it. So is this shorter than five inches? <laughs> oi, oi, oi. says that on the package that they are machine cut pieces all right so the green we're going to go from darkest green to lightest i'm not going to consider this one green i think that one's more oh maybe it is green it is kind of more green than purple so i'm going to look at this order here a little oh He's, he's showing you guys. Uh -huh. The camera's down so that it sees the whole desk. And then it goes into yellow. It doesn't see over here. And then... The camera sees from this one down. Oh. And then a yellow. And then the purples are... It's a gradiating purple, yellowish, green. All in one. So that'll be like the center color probably. And then we have dark to light purple. I really wanted to use black, but I figured black background would get lost. The purple would lose it. Um, because this dark purple is so dark, it would get lost in the black. All right. This one's mixed color too, so this could go there. more of a mixer color so I'm separate this is probably the part that's going to take me the longest is making the color way for the center 25 patch part yeah but they like to see how you do your color um okay did I lay these in the wrong pile two of those two of those this one is this one and this purple 
is this purple. This is this purple. This is this purple, and that is that purple. So that would be darker, and this is lighter. All right, so I'm going to pull 25 pieces for my center. So I'm going to stand up to do this. It's going to be a little bit hard on me because I have a humongous tummy ache today, guys. How many 5-inch <laughs> squares do you need, and what size do you need? Two charm packs. Two charm packs is what? Eight, if they're 42, it's 84 pieces. What am I going to do with that color? And what size and are you making? That color. The, the quilt is 51 inches by 51 inches. This is more of that shade of purple. All right, so I'm going to pull 25 of them. Will it work if you don't have two of each print? It will work if you don't have two of each print. It'll work if you use all scraps. Two. Four, five, and we're gonna do two, <coughs> three, four, five, making a twenty five patch block to start my center. have the purple which goes into this purple and this purple no I don't like it like that let's go to this dark one first I'm gonna go to the dark one first I think that'll be better because I started with a really dark one in the corner come on this one this one there we go dark then medium and lighter, <coughs> lighter, 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 and we'll do this one lighter. There we go. Now to fill in the middle with the opposite direction. One of these. Oh, no, that's less than. We'll do darker colors. Lighter. Yellow. And this one. And then we're going to go with the purples the opposite way. Gives me two really dark ones. Darker. Nope, that's not going to work. Hold on. This is probably the main part that's going to drive me nuts is this middle part. Maybe I should use all the ones that I didn't use on the outside. Put that in the center. Put that there. Pull these out. Hold on. We're, we're making something up here. Butterflies. These ones aren't that pretty. I don't know if I want them totally everywhere. Put this one in there. And one more of the multicolored ones, which is this one. That one there. I like that one. And that there. And that in the middle. And then this. We're going to put that back and put one of these on each side like that. And is there three left or four? There's three left. Probably that one. Where did this one come from? Over here. Two of those. I need two, four colors. I need a green. I'm going to put this really dark green on this side. It's not going to work like I thought, but we're just going to do it anyway. Because <laughs> of the colors that I have. You have the most of them, like this Dark darker hair. green, and then we're going to put this darker one over here, like that, and then we're going to put this super dark one over here, and this super dark one 
over here like that or is that too close to that one I'm not too close to that one I don't know I like it so I'll put the purples on this side and the greens on this side Oh, yeah. Um, I don't like the yellow in here. I think that's what's throwing me off. You dropped something to your left? No. 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 Nope, not that I can see. No, you don't need to move it. The these all back. Lights radiating out to darks. That's what I was attempting to do, sort of. I like it like this. Because there was more purples than there was light greens. I don't like the yellow, though. I think the yellow and this light, light one are off. I don't think they need to be in it. But I don't have very many greens to replace with. And it does gradiate to yellow, yellowish green. I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to sew it together. I like it. It's going to stay. <laughs> oh, I put this one there. That's what's different. That dark purple and then that green over there. Hmm. And I don't care. I'm doing it. We're sewing it. Let's go. So I'm going to take my first row and put it onto my second row. So my right piece, which is second row, onto my left piece, which is the first row. And I'm going to sew all those all the way down. And then I'm going to leave them hooked together and add the next row, the next row, and the next row. I literally am chain piecing this whole thing. Will you use the full two packs of charms? Yes, I use the full two packs. Whatever's left over, I use in the binding. And if you watch the original video, which you don't have to leave to watch it right now, but if you watch the original video, that's what I do. And I show you how. I show you how to line it up and everything. Yellow and green? Yeah, the, this has purple, green, and yellow. Because some of the pieces have yellow in them. So it's a little bit of everything. But that's okay. We're making this work and we're spreading all the colors out and it's going to be beautiful no matter how ugly it is. Get it? <laughs> I know I'm so funny. They go together in person. You, you would see it all goes together. It just looks weird. Once it's all put together, it'll look better. I mean, I could have put all the purples in the center and put only greens around the weave it part but i didn't do that all right so i'm going to come up here and we're going to press this first one to the right with my finger the next one to the left and since minor boutiques the finger pressing is like you know the best for this <laughs> you don't even have to iron it you just finger press it and be on your merry way with more sewing all right right left right left right left and then we're going to come back to the top, and I'm going to grab number one from the row three, and then number one from, uh, you know, row three, second half, second row, whatever, you know, number two from row three, so on and so forth. Right sides together really don't matter because these are petites. doesn't really matter. Which side is the right and which side is the left? Is there an ugly quilt? Huh? Is there an ugly quilt? Uh, I've made ugly quilts. So Scott and every one of you don't think they're ugly, but there are some I've made that I think are ugly. <laughs> yeah, there can be an ugly quilt. You can make an ugly quilt. You can take as many ugly fabrics as you want, put them together, and make a quilt. But most of the time, <laughs> it turns out beautiful. <laughs> like I made a Chris, the Christmas quilt for the. 12 days of Christmas that I did with friends here on YouTube. Yeah. And those were some ugly fabrics. Like, really ugly fabrics. <laughs> and it was a beautiful quilt when I was done. So, yeah. All right. So I'm just going to press from the bottom. This whole row was going to the left. This whole row was going to the right. This one was going to the left. This one. 
that way and this one to the right. All right, so piece one from row four. Literally, I'm just keeping them all together. They're chain pieced. These are batiks, so they're lightweight. So it's not heavy. There's not much tugging or pulling going on. It's definitely going to be a really different one for sure. Remember, I'm doing this all from memory. So if I say something different in this video as opposed to my original, it's because I'm working off memory. And that video is from like two, three years ago. All right. Again, I'm just pressing the way I started the rows. One's going to the left, right, left, right, left, so on and so forth. You know how. Left and right. And now for the last section, you see how fast you can make a 25 patch block this way with five inch charms. It goes pretty quick. The whole thing is, should go really quick. Oops, I got stuck. And then we're not going to give you any real math numbers, minus the fact that everything's either five inches or two and a half inches, because that's the math on this. It's either five inches or two and a half inches. Will the yellow in the background have enough contrast? The background is a cream brown. So it should have enough contrast. It's a uh, stone. Oh, no, no, no. It's aged to perfection by Maywood Studio. So it's like a cream with brown little stuff. It has plenty of contrast. We spent a while digging through fabrics trying to find the best background for this one for these two charm packs but I had two charm packs of this so I wanted to use them and I thought about using a batik at first but you know so they're all hooked together now it's really easy from here just turn it to the side and put the first row over the second row everything's already finger pressed so you just line up that end you don't need to pin it because Every single seam is going to nest since we've already pressed them. You just line it up, sew to the next one, straighten everything out, hold that next seam. Again, they're in opposite directions. This is like the easiest thing you could possibly do. Any beginner can do this in quilting. This is the most beginner friendly pattern I have ever done. There's no cutting anything on diagonals. There's no sewing on the diagonal. There's none of that. All right, so those first two are now sewn together. I'm just going to finger press. Finger pressing. Just like that. And then what I usually do is now I flip it this opposite way and just go this way. So I'm going to put that middle one now over it. And I'm going to line those up. I, I try to have all my hanging things to the left of me or on top. That way I can adjust if I need to adjust anything. Normally you don't have to with chain piecing like this or web piecing is technically what it's called. Just open that up and finger press that. I press them all into the same direction. So if I started pressing one to the right, then I press all of them to the right. If I start to the left, then I press all of them to the left. And then everything's still hooked, so nothing's out of order. You just put the next one on top. You can't get them out of order. It's kind of hard to sew on the wrong row when you do it this way because it, it, it'll fold over itself all funny-like. Again, 
again, all I'm doing is just nesting my pre finger pressed seams and they go really nicely. Everything lines right up because they were five inch squares to start with. And I have a consistent quarter inch seam. All right, I'm gonna do that same thing with pressing. I'm just gonna finger press it. They're all going the same direction. In my case, to the left of me. Just like that, there's one more row. Nothing got messed up or out of order. It worked out perfect. And then just line it up and sew it. seam to hold. So to the end, everything's still nice and lined up. Now I'm just going to go ahead and finger press that. And now I have made a 25 patch block out of five inch squares. Just like that. And it's already mostly flat. Just like that. Bam. I'm saying just like that a lot. <laughs> All right, so there's my 25 patch start. I'm gonna get have Scott get the iron on so that can get pressed nice and perfectly flat so that we can take our first measurement from one side to the other so we could start cutting out our first border around it, which is gonna be five inch strips. We need four of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut four inch, four or five inch strips. So what am I ironing? The whole thing? Mm-hmm. Just make sure all the seams stay the way that I finger press them, well, which they you, should. If you did it, then it'll be fine. All right, so I'm going to go ahead now and cut four or five inch strips off of your three and a quarter yards of fabric. Oh, look at that, plenty of room. Let's grab a starting ruler though, right here. Line on the have you line. ever quilted a regular cotton quilt top and then used fleece for the backing? I have quilted with fleece on the backing many times. Um, I've used fleece. I've used, uh, what is that other stuff called? Flannel. I've Flannel. used uh, minky, cuddle, all of it. I've used it at all. I need a rotary cutter. And I need a Scotty out of my way for just a moment. What did I do? Oh, that cuts like butter when it's a brand new blade. Woo wee. That was like perfect. All right, I'm going to reline this up because I did not start it on What's a line. What's the name of the charm pack again? Where's that thing oh. so I can show it? Yeah. I'm not sure you guys can find this charm pack still, but this is what it is. All right, lining that up, and we're going to cut four five-inch strips off of here to start for the first round. One. Line this up. Two. And if you want to know what ruler I'm cutting with, this is the Quilters Slide Rock, Slide Rock, Slide Lock um, by So Be It Quilts. You could find that by typing in explanation SL, I think. And it'll give you a link to the Slide Lock rulers. They sell more than just these Slide Lock big ones, they have a 14 inch as well and um, some little fussy cutting ones now. Oops. All right, so there's my four five inch strips for now. We're gonna still work with that bolt. What do you want this? No, I'm gonna grab it in two seconds. So I'm set those aside and we're gonna get a measurement off of this 
on two sides. So you can either take your measurement from your left and your right or your top and your bottom. It really doesn't matter. I'm just going to line it up right here. And I want 23 inches. And this side also is at 23, 23 inches. So it's perfect at 23 inches. So that means we're going to set that 25 patch aside and we're going to cut 23 inches off of two of our five inch strips. So I'm going to open them up to cut 23 inches. I'm going to stack them on top of each other. All right, I'm going to cut the selvage off. And we're going to line it up and cut 23 inches. So everything's nice and lined up. I got, I got my fold right here, but that's okay. I'm just going to push it down and come to the 23 inch mark and make the cut just like that. This I'm just going to set aside for now because I can use those pieces. So the first thing we're going to do is take and attach our piece pieces, plural, one to each side. So right sides together and right sides together. So one's going to go on this side and one's going to go on this side. And those sides are 23 inches exact. I'm making it simple by telling you the numbers as we're going because, again, I didn't remember them off the top of my head. All right, so I'm just lining it up, sewing it on with a quarter inch seam. And you can pin it if you want, but it's the exact size it needs to be, so it lays on there beautifully. All right, so we're going to put this one now on this other side. Oh, good. Well, I don't have any specialty links for you guys there, so if you want to go to Hancock's at Paducah, you'll find it. If you plan on making the exact same thing. I have no idea what store you can find the Age to Perfection by um, Maywood Studio. All right, so I'm going to press these back towards the background. I'm just going to do it real quickly so that we can get to the next step. Turn it around and do the other one. Even though I gotta fix this because it got folded down. All right, other side. And roll back. So the ironing today will be a little bit of me and a little bit of Scotty. <laughs> yeah, you took my job already. All right. The next number you need is, for these two pieces to be cut, is the size from one side of your border to the other side of your border. And it looks like, let's line it all up. We are at 32 inches, 32 inches. So both the top and the bottom are at the 32. So we're gonna cut 32 inches same thing we're going to open these all the way up open this one all the way up I got her table Ooh, i'm glad she got her table runner yeah but the mail not going out till thursday and friday yeah mail, <laughs> mail went quick. out pretty late this week all right so i'm going to cut the selvage off first real quickly off of both of them at the same exact time come on line it up there we go. And then we're going to line it up on the zero. We're going to come over to 32. Make sure that center is nice and flat. We're going to come over to 
32 and we're going to make that lovely cut. All right. So I'm just going to set these aside again. These pieces can be used to cut from when we start doing the weave it border part. So now I'm going to go ahead and attach one up here to the top and one down here to the bottom, just like that. And they're the exact size they need to be. It's so lovely when everything turns out just right. That way I don't have to go back and look at my own video <laughs> and see what I did because I don't know where my instructions are. <laughs> so I'm just we'll sewing this on. Do it as you go. So we all have a basket. Yeah. You're an improv quilter. An improv quilter, whatever. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to hold these two ends together nice and straight and flush and flat. And I back stitched. Now I'm going to turn it around and do the t other side. This two ends together, they're the exact same size. My quarter inch is spot on today for that to happen. Usually one side is like a quarter inch off. <laughs> today they're like perfect. Yeah, I know you can, Scotty. Here you go then. I'm right here, yes. Okay, the next step is, so here's the center so far. Look at that, so easy. So now we need to take some charm squares and we're going to cut them. So since I'm going to try to do the purple now on this side and the green now on that side, we're going to take some charm squares. I'm going to try to like leave this right here for me to see. And we're going to take... Behind you in front of the flag? Oh, no, it'll be fine for now. Uh -huh. So we're going to take some charm squares. I'm just going to take a bunch of them. Two, three... Four, five, six, seven, eight, oops, nine, ten, eleven. We're going to just take one from each one so that way I know that I have them all. I don't think this is going to be enough to go all the way around, but... What I'm going to do is take all these, I'm going to stack them up nicely, and I'm going to cut them exactly in half just once so that they'll be two and a half inches by five inches. And don't worry if we have leftover pieces at the end because what we're going to be doing is cutting some other ones into two and a half inch squares. All right, so there's a whole stack of them. Let me stack some more. Just stacking them up right on top of each other as best as I can. That way we get as accurate as possible of some cuts here. And then we're going to do these colors. Just stacking them up. With batiks, I can do like eight and nine layers of them because they're not very thick. They're easier to cut. Plus, I have a fresh blade, so I could probably cut through ten layers with a fresh blade. I'm not going to push it, but, you know, we're going to do the best we can. 
All right, so I'm just going to split all these stacks exactly in half, and I have a two and a half by eight inch Missouri Star ruler um, to make this part go as easy as possible just by laying it on half of it, just like this, and splitting all those in half. Okay, and now we're going to take some of these colors. Just going to take a couple of them. So I'm kind of like skipping tones here. Four of those, and we're going to take a couple of these. And we're going to split these as well into two and a half inch squares. Come on. Come on. I think it was like 24 two and a half inch squares per, I'm not sure. But we're going to make some two and a half inch squares. So we're going to cut twice now. So we're going to cut up and down and side to side. I need some more than that. Just to be on the safe side. Because if I have too many, it's okay. They go towards the binding. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to split these in half. And then in half again. The other direction. So I have two and a half inch squares. Like that. Oops, that's shifted. Don't let it shift too much. All right, so I have two and a half inch squares, and then I have two and a half by five inch squares. What we're going to do is one side at a time, we're going to build this. So we're going to take Dark green medium lighter lighter. So for every one, you're gonna take one, oops, let's find a green of these smaller squares in between. Okay. I probably did two in the video. For every one, I did two smallers. Oops, that one's the same. Let's pull this one right there and do this one and this one right here. So it's going to be a two and a half by five, two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by five, two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by five, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half by five. Two and a half, two and a half, and two and a half by five. It's going to be bigger than it needs to be. But we're going to make this four times. Right? One, two, no, eight times. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight. Yes, we're making eight times. So we're probably going to have to cut more. But we're going to do this eight times. So my second one, I'm going to just get laid out. Put that there. I'm hoping this makes sense to you guys. Probably doesn't. <laughs> I just laying them out in front of me, so I need so two. And then we're gonna do this right here, right there. And I'll probably have to cut more of my background pieces. Like I said, I probably didn't cut enough to start anyway. All right, so that makes four. We're gonna do four purples and four of the greens. That's four. Four I need. More green? Any more green in this? Okay, nope. Let's cut another green. Where are we at? <clears throat> oh, you know what? This one is not in there. Is this one in there? No, it is not. Let's throw that one in there. Rotary cutter. So if you have to cut more, cut more. I say it in the initial video how many times of what I'm cutting, and if it's not said, it's actually written in the on the screen. Four, 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 and four. Okay, 
So that's ready. Now let's put the four of the greens. What stitch length do you use for batiks, or does it matter? Uh, I use a I got a 2.1, 2.2-ish, somewhere in that vicinity of my stitch length. I'm going to cut this. And then cut it this way. Three. And not three. And then that three and that four. I'm trying to make sure no two colors are the same next to each other. Nope, those are the same. Throw that one there. Nope, that's the same. Are there no more greens? Oh, there's the, that same one again. Let's put just one left of all of these. Let's do this one. So I'm slicing it in half, and then I'm slicing only one half of it in half. Let's put this one there, that one there, this one there. That would be in row three. Let's put that in row three. That one can go in row four. And we need one more cut. This one. And cut only half of it. Like I said, I'm trying to make this in one video, so we're making it. Put this one in row two. It doesn't have one of these. There we go. Row three, four. Okay. There we go. There's all those. Now let's do four purples. So purple light. And the fan at the AC is on, so it's going to start blowing my pieces everywhere. <laughs> all right. It's not that bad. No, it's not anyway. horrible yet. One, two, one, two. one more of these, and one more of those. We're going to do the next row. This one, that one. Two, this dark one. Uh, replacement rotary blades. The ones I'm using right now are Martelli's from Martelli. Four. 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 And Does the needle size matter for four. the fatigue? No, I have a 9014 in mine for this. All right, that's two. Next two. None of that matches. So it's more green and purple. Let's put light purple there. And that one's too matchy matchy. Let's put this dark one. And that one in the second row. I'm talking to myself. Oops, row three. That's three. And then this one could be four. That could be two, three, and four. Nope, that's the same as that one, so that's three and four. And two more right here. That could be for three, and that could be for four. Look at that. So again, anything left over goes towards towards my binding, and also because we're going to be making the four corners as well which I have no idea how I'm going to do those just yet because we're going to see how this even looks. So now I'm going to sew all these together into rows. I guess I will hang this right here. I don't have any extra clips, huh? Do you want me to nope, you? it's fine, just like that. I can help. Nope. Hang it. All right, so now I'm going to sew this to that to this to that to this to that that to that that make a long row but i'm actually going to chain piece the whole lot of things so i'm just gonna take these first two run it under take the next two run it under 
and then chain piece all of them because that's what I like to do and I think I get things done a little bit faster when I chain piece. So I'll throw these two under and then so on and so forth. Have you ever used a 7010 needle? Uh, yes, I've used 7010s, but I mainly. What did you use it for? Uh, what did I use it for? Bag and clothes. I do use them on. Um, I think that's the ones I use on the embroidery machine. Honestly. Hey, Tiffany, I bought a Martelli and a piece of plastic broke off next to the blade. Is it necessary yeah. to have it? No, it's not necessary as long as there's at least one part of that left, because that's all that's left on mine. But you can order a replacement fart. At, fart a replacement fart? You can yeah. order a you replacement can get one of them too. fart. <laughs> you can order them online or from Martelli. They're, uh, I think they're like 89 or 99 cents, something like that, but you have to get more stuff to get free shipping most places. So I would definitely check like Amazon or something. But yeah, those things break really easily. That's the only thing bad about the Martelli cutter. Of all things, it's the only thing that I've found bad is that stupid plastic piece breaks. It has four, it's like a, got a circle in it and it has four plastic prongs that come around into this thing. And it's just the separator between the blade and the front part of the thing to keep it all full or else your blade will wobble in there. If there's just one piece left, you're good. But once that last piece breaks, I have to get a new piece. So I've been very careful about changing my blade because I don't want to break that last piece. I definitely don't want to break that That's last piece. That's why you never change your blade. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I don't change my blade very often because that thing breaks off almost every time. All right. So now chain pieced all those. We're just going to come to the beginning. I'm not even pressing. I'm just going to grab the next piece and sew down all of these. Just grabbing the next piece, sewing it down. It's literally just that easy. And I'm pretty sure I probably made it more harder in the original video, but I was definitely trying to, you know, help those that are beginners by explaining things better than I'm doing right now. Right now I'm actually really just trying to see if I could do this whole thing in one video, in one two hour or less live stream. <laughs> I'm probably already pretty far in though because of my decision making. But I just went with it and just thrown it all together willy nilly without any direction. I probably would have been further along than I currently am. Um, right now I'm working on making the uh, four outer border sections. And then we have to make the four corners. So if I don't finish this week, I will continue next week. Because that's just how it works the last couple so Sundays. All right, so I'm just going to go back to the beginning again. Chain piece the next. I'm just going to pull these right over here. That way it's easier. And do the first four and then do the second four. I'm just making long strips. You have a video on changing the blade, right? Yes, I do have a video of my perspective of changing the blade. Not an overhead view, not a sideways view, not a backwards view. It's just a my view at the holding the rotary blade, holding the rotary cutter. Oh, really? Wow. That's crazy. I wonder if they had a fire sale. Oh. <laughs> Probably afterwards. I've heard of companies doing that. Oh, those two are like... Okay, that's the order they go in then, because that was the same thing. I thought I was paying attention. <laughs> thought it. I thought it. Sometimes you think something and you really didn't do it. You just thought it. That's it. <laughs> when you made your postage stamp 
12. Did you shorten the stitch length lower than two? Anything I do with one inch squares, my stitch length is less than two, yes. It's usually like 1.8. I also do 1.6, 1.8 stitch length, one paper piecing. But just regular piecing like this, it's usually like a 2 or a 2.1 or 2.2. It's really hard because mine's a dial, and it's literally right barely past the 2. So, you know, it's just a guess on this machine because it's a dial, not a numeric number. Back to the beginning again. Next. We're going to slide these over a little bit because my rows are going to get too long and then they're just going to start knocking everything onto the floor. When is QuiltCon? QuiltCon is February 22nd to the 26th. It's the end of February. I will be there. My plane tickets are booked. So I am definitely 100% going to be on the East Coast, guys. So if you want to meet me in person and hang out for a few days, that, that, well, at least the few days that I'll be there, I will be there. I'm not taking any classes or lectures or anything. I really don't have the money for that. I'm just going to observe all the beautiful quilts and film them for those of you that can't go. And, you know, I know you guys enjoy watching my quilt show videos that I make. I make a video version and I make a photo version. And um, so, yes, I will be on the East Coast uh, in Raleigh, North Carolina for four days. And I will be with my best friend Becca and my friend Ian and my friend Mary and all the other content creators that I hear are going to be there whom I'm pretty sure I will hang out with one or two or three or more of them because, you know, I've met quite a few of them. My last quilt con I met, um, the last quilt con I was at, I met Jenny Doan, Misty Doan, and Natalie. I met all of them. They secretly go to quilt con. They don't like to draw big crowds. I missed Angela Walters by literally less than five minutes <laughs> when I was there the lady goes the blonde one with the same shirt as you just came by like five minutes ago and it was Angela <laughs> yep I met Eleanor Burns at a different quilt show, not Quilt Con, but I have met her. If you guys want to know the, the celebrity quilters that I've met. She was fun to hang out with. I hung out with her for like, I don't know, 20 minutes. She's so sweet, too. And I felt like I was her best friend when we were hanging out. So much so that she had lipstick on her teeth. And I was like, oh my God, you need to clean it off your teeth like this. And she's like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> it was so cute. She was so happy that I was able to tell her that. <laughs> All right, back to the beginning again. Slide these over so that I don't knock them down. It's it kind of awkward because these are long strips now, so I just have to hold them up on the table better. The 
seems more purple than it does. I'm going to pull this one right here. I don't want it to be too purpley on the was green she side. When you saw her? Yep, she was in Arizona when I met her. She was right here in my lovely town <laughs> in Lake Havasu. So for those of you that are new to my channel, didn't know I do live in Lake Havasu, Arizona, where the home of the London Bridge. It's a tourist attraction here. So if you're ever in the area, I could take you to see the London Bridge, but I'm pretty sure you could take yourself to see it because it's literally right there when you come into town. <laughs> All right, one more to go. Ooh, let's go there. Grab these. Grab the top one. You can see how it wants to fall. I'm just going to hold it on the table as best as possible. In the original video, I made these one at a time, I think, each row. I definitely prefer to chain piece though, but I was definitely showing beginners how to do something without confusing them with chain piecing in the beginning of their learning how to quilt. Mm, purple. All right, so now all of my eight pieces, two for each side, are all together. And all I'm going to do is take my rotary cutter and cut all my connecting threads very carefully in between these rows and then Love pass them to Scott to iron them all one direction or the other. It does not matter which way as long as they're all pressed flat. Oh, so I get to choose? Yeah. Just being very careful not to cut my pieces. I'm just cutting the threads in between all of my rows. And then they're going to pass them to Scott. And he is going to press. And then we're going to cut some two and a half inch strips off of our yardage. Somebody said they want to go to Havasu Falls. I told her they are not easy to get to. Yeah, Havasu Falls is four by four. Yeah. Most people in town have never been there or even heard of them. Yeah, most people don't even know where it is. Like, we don't even know where it is. It's out there somewhere in the middle of Nowheresville cool. where we can't go because we don't own a four by. I've had friends that have been there and had to take two trucks because one broke down. I'm going to make sure real quick. It's very hard to get to. Oh, wait. We need one more two and a half inch strip piece on each one of these. They did come out shorter than I thought. Okay, one more two and a half inch strip. One more two and a half inch square. So I need eight, four greens, and four purple. Do these have to be in order? No. Oh, okay. Good. Because I'm short. So as he makes them, I'm going to attach them. So I'm going to cut this one. I just need eight, two and a half inch squares. One, two. Uh, and like I said, anything left over goes towards the binding. Three. And I need a four. I'm going to put this one in. And that's four. And then we're going to do four purples. Just want one two and a half inch square from all of these. Are you wasting a fabric? 
I am not wasting fabric because all the leftovers make the binding. Should I cancel it? I don't know that. Yeah, there's no waste here. This is a no waste quilt. And yes, it fell off the wall. All right, so I'm going to attach my. You're rolling on it though, it's an issue. Don't roll on it. Don't roll on it. That's what I said. I can use the hooky here. I didn't want to unhook them and rehook them because the orange things fall off. Just. Okay, fine then. I won't. Fold it. Fold it and lay it nicely on the floor. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to put my four um, greens on real quick, and I'm just going to finger press them back. I knew I was short a piece. It looked kind of short. After you add all those seams, you know, it changes the size. Let's add some of these purple ones because I have the purples next to me. It doesn't matter what side it goes on because both ends have a... Um, a two and a half by five inch piece. There's gonna be one weird looking quilt. I have a feeling just by the looks of things at this very moment. Oh. Being picky. Is this ready? Those two are. One in my hand is not. It's okay. And the last one. All right, this should be plenty now. All right. Here, you can just press all these while I cut the next pieces out. I just did press them. What am I pressing now? This end piece that I added because I was a two and a half inch piece shy. Oh, it's one little end on each one? Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. All right, now I'm going to cut four two and a half inch strips off of my yardage. I'm just going to move all those pieces out of the way. Just need four two and a half inch strips. Grab one of my big rulers, make it easy. You know, I actually have acquired this lovely thing here. It is the Creative Grids Stripology ruler, but it's not tall enough. It's for being folded in half twice. So I'm not going to use it, but I do have one now so that I can cut strips easier on my folded yardage. Just thought I'd share with you guys that I got one of those finally. I always need to straighten my side back out after I move the bolt. So weird. Weird how that happens. So I'm going to cut four two and a half inch strips. Just four. Two. Three and nine. Don't say that, Scotty. Four. He likes to give me random numbers to screw with my head. And then we need four five inch strips. I'm just going to cut that next number while he's pressing still. So we need four five inch strips. And look at this. It got pressing. cricket again. How oh, does it do that? that fell on the floor. Mm -hmm. Five inch. Turn the ruler. Oh, that's six. This is five. One, two, three, four, five. 
So I need four five inch strips. No, I need five. No, four. I need four of them. That's it. One. Again, this is all memory. The original video has all the exact stuff. And four. Okay. So there's four of those. And then we need all of our pieces. Close my blade. And we're going to hook together like this. So we're going to take two greens and they're going to go opposite of each other. So if this side starts with a two and a half inch square, then the next bottom one is going to start with a two and a half inch square. Okay. And then in between the two is going to be your two and a half inch strip like that. And we're going to do that four times. So if one side has a two and a half inch square, the opposite side will have a two and a half inch square. And in between the two is going to be one of these. And we're going to cut them to the exact size in a minute. I'm just showing you guys the next step. So I'm going to put this one here and this one opposite of it. And this one here, and this one opposite of it, like this. And then we're going to have these two. But we're going to get our math number right now from our quilt top middle piece. Is there a quilt top in here? No. no. Rally, North Carolina is 2024's quilt con location. The next quilt con location I hear is going to be Phoenix, Arizona again for 2025. All right, both sides are 32 inches. I'm going to check all four sides while we're at it, but they should be all the same, 32 and 32. Okay, so they're all 32 inches. So we need to make sure that our strip units are 32 inches, and I'm always going to cut from the five inch square side, not the two and a half inch one. We want that to stay whole. So the five inch by two and a half inch side is the side that I'm going to trim it. So I'm going to literally lay these right here. Oops, wrong way because I'm, you know, not paying attention. And I'm going to trim all of my units to 32 inches. I have a Martelli cutter, but every time I change the blade, it won't turn. What am I doing wrong? Every time you change the blade, it won't turn. It's probably too tight. I literally just cut off three quarters of an inch. That's it. Yeah, you need to loosen the screw. If it's not cutting, it's too tight and or you put it back together wrong. All right, I'm going to cut these two pieces at 32 inches. Because these need to be 32 inches as well. These are the two and a half inch background. I gotta cut the selvage off first. I'll line it up. Everything's being cut at 32 inches. And I cut that crooked because I did not have it lined up. What a dummy. All right. Stay lined up on the line, lined up on the line. Push my fold down and come over to 32 inches. There we go. So those two are now at 32 inches. Just have a little bit left. Then we're going to cut these two. Again, I'm cutting the side that's the bigger rectangle off, not my small two and a half inch rectangle. And yes, I'm double stacking them, but they're laying pretty darn flat. There. Right there. Cut three quarters of an inch pretty much off. What differences do you see between Quilt Con and Quilt Expo in Texas? I've never been to a Quilt Expo in Texas, so I honestly do not know. 
All right, let's do these. Same exact time. I'm literally going through all four sections. Or uh, six sections. You know what I'm saying here. All right, let's wind up on the line. Code it at 32. Do the links work after the live? The links work after the live. They should come up in the bottom chat when if you watch the live chat replay when you're watching the live stream replay they should work at least that i don't know i don't i've never watched the live chat after have you scotty to see if they work i never no. paid attention to it and i never paid attention to it when i've gone back into a video to find out what someone said or asked or something i used to do that but i don't need more because i don't have the time all right so we're coming to 32 there, toss that aside, and one more stack. And then we're going to start sewing these units together. And then all we need to do is make the four corners and sew it every, everything all on. Does it matter which side is on top when you sew them, strip versus piece sections? No, it does not matter which side is on top. Whatever's easiest for your brain. There we go. It's lined up. Make sure one more time before I cut. I don't, definitely don't want to mess that up. All right. Everything is now ready. So I'm going to sew those like this to this and that. And then these ones are going to go with the small piece on this side. And then these are the big piece on that side, then that's in the middle, and these are the big piece on this side. Look at that. And everything is going to go right sides together. So I'm going to start by making strip units here. So I'm going to take a background and one of the strip piece units that we just made, and I'm going to sew it with the background on top. It doesn't matter, strip unit on top. Whatever's easiest. Whatever one doesn't flip the seams. <laughs> My seams get flipped when I have the strip units on the bottom. As long as I hold them flat, and they go pretty nicely. All right, so there's that and then I'm just going to show you real quick it's going to get pressed towards your background so I'm going to press this towards my background the rest I'm going to um, chain piece but for now I just want to show you it's going towards the background like this so you have a unit that looks like this then you grab your other side of it right here another one of these units and it goes on the other side so it's going to be on this side so you have two strip units and a sink the background in the center so those are opposite and then you have your long piece on this end and two and a half on this side so make sure you flip them because that way you know your pieces lay more i guess it looks more symmetry that way i don't know i don't know how to say it I'll probably go to that one too because it's in Phoenix, which is my home state. <laughs> but that won't be till 2025. So, all of you West Coasters, if you want to go to something like QuiltCon, you could watch my previous Phoenix QuiltCon video. Um, I have two of them one's video footage only, and one is um, photos only. And I noticed this is too long by literally an eighth of an inch so i probably wasn't paying attention to my cutting very good anyways so here is a strip unit and then obviously scott's going to press this for me but i'm going to go ahead and chain piece the rest of the strip units like this you so there's your sewing machine 
my sewing machine. I think this one is butterfly. <laughs> I think I just call it butterfly. And the other one, my Juki Industrials name is Dragon. And the rest of my sh machines are unnamed. <laughs> They're already finger pressed towards okay. the background fabric. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, chain piece these. What does it cost to enter for? To enter it, uh, to go to the show, or to enter it as an entering quilt? I don't know the price. I know to go to it, it's like 48, 45 or something dollars for all four days. And it's, if you're part of the Modern Quilt Guild, it's free because you're part of the Modern Quilt Guild, which is like $55 a year or something like that. I don't know. No, it's, it's free. QuiltCon is free, wasn't it? I thought it was. Oh. That's what I thought it said on there. In other words, you're not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure. I don't buy my tickets till September 15th for QuiltCon, and then I'll have that already done and squared away as well. Okay, and then I'm going to chain piece this unit in next. And then chain piece of this unit in next. <laughs> it just goes so much faster when you just chain piece everything. Yeah, no, because I'm chain piecing. It'll be just a minute. So I'm going to come back up here to this purple one. I'm going to finger press it towards my background and then put my other side of the purple on. Why aren't we entering a quilt into QuiltCon? I'm not entering a quilt into QuiltCon because I don't have any modern quilts to enter. No, it's too complicated. And it's We'd too complicated. To yeah. And then they will have to mail it back, which we have to pay for shipping. And yeah. you have to pay to enter it. It's yeah. I have to pay to enter, pay to ship it to them, pay to ship it back from them. You know, it's it's pretty complicated, stressful ordeal. So that's why I'm not entering. Plus, I don't have any modern quilt. I don't have anything modern quilt show worthy. Honestly, I don't. Even if I did want to enter. In the future, I will enter shows like QuiltCon. But right now... I haven't entered any shows in quite a while. Well, we wanted to enter it, but it's too yeah. complicated. Yeah, I wanted to enter QuiltCon, but it's just too much, too complicated for me. Well, the quilt has to be there a week ahead of time. And mm -hmm. you're not flying there a week ahead of time to give them a quilt, so we'd have to mail it to them. Yeah. And then you don't get it back at the very end. They have to take stuff down and everything, so you have to mail it back. Yeah. That's a pain. Just finger pressing these back towards the background real quick. This side on. This is the short piece first.
constitutes a modern quilt? Um, nothing traditional constitutes modern. So, like, uh, not straight edges and funky psychedelic colors, just weirdness. Um, random weirdness constitutes as modern. <laughs> They do have traditional um, category for quilt con and art category in this category and, you know, they have all that. Again, I had about one eighth of an inch bigger of my center, which is kind of strange. So I think it's the fold in the, the fold because I didn't, you know, press that out before. They say the one you're making now would go as uh, modern. Yeah, I didn't press that fold down. I'm pretty sure that's why everything is one eighth of an inch bigger. Plus, regular fabric stretch more than batiks do. They're all exactly the same, though. I'm pretty sure I lined that up on the 32, not 32 and one eighth. All right. I'm just going to do this real quick. What was the quilt show where you entered a quilt? The quilt show that I've entered are local quilt shows. Mono monochrome quilts can be modern, yes. Monochromatic. Oh man, two of the same colors kind of landed right there on next to each other. Oh well, I'm not gonna fuss. All right, so there's one of my purple units. The one, oh, sewing machines plus online virtual quilt fest. Those are the ones I win, that I've won machines at. I did enter the Grace sewing machine one. It was an online one as well. I entered that before, but I didn't win anything. but I did enter it. All right, here's a green one. There should be four total units because there's four sides to the quilt.
just check the back of this one. All right, all four sides. Now, each one of these gets, see, I don't even have a reference picture or anything. I'm pretty sure the five inch piece goes next on above it. Picture of weave it. Um, Yes, please. Just so I can see real quick. I need a reference picture because I'm not that perfect at remembering things. So sometimes I just need to reference something. I'm pretty sure these go on top because it doesn't go around the edge. It has to go on top because the next border is built with it, I think. I'm pretty sure of it. The four corners are built with these pieces. More. It's just stacking these on top of each other while Scott looks me up a picture real quick, guys. Does that help? Um, okay, yeah, it is on top. Okay. All right, so I'm cut, got my five inch strips that we cut, the four five inch strips, and I'm going to go ahead and cut off the beginning, which is the selvage, and then I'm going to go ahead and cut these to 32 inches as well, and attach each of these to the proper top or bottom of my unit. So whatever one I dedicate as my top or my bottom, that's what's going to get sewn there. So I'm going to go ahead and line this up going to mind this fold now because I think that's why I had an eighth of an inch extra on all of them. Go ahead and find my 32 inch mark on my cutting mat. Just going to slide this over so I kind of gave it a little bit of a yank. And I'm going to cut at my 32 inch mark. And then I'm also going to, once those are cut, I'm actually going to bring this right back to me and cut four five inch squares, one for each corner for the border corners. So I need four five inch. I need two, no, four, one, two. Can I see that picture again? Hmm. Oh, you closed it, closed it. Just leave it open, please. Whoops, sorry. I need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, two and a half by five inch pieces I'm pretty sure so I'm just going to cut those now if I'm wrong I'm wrong so there those are and then two and a half by two and a half inch pieces I need um four one two three four I need eight I think let's make sure that this is facing the correct direction though it's easy to get this line backwards or upside down. Here's the full video. I don't need the full video. I just need to look at the picture. Yep, two per border. And I need to just four two and a half by two and a half inch squares. Okay. Don't close it though. There we go. Four two and a half by two and a half. And then I need like I said, we saved all of our pieces. So all these are ready. Our four corners then we have four and four this way. Then we have this piece here. And what we're going to do is we're going to cut some of our, I'm going to do two corners in purple and two corners in um, the, uh, can't think, sorry, I'm having a brain fart. Two in purple and two in green. So here's my purples, purple in this one. Purple, and then let's cut. Like anything we cut extra, again, it goes towards the binding. So I'm 
put this one there and then we'll use this one next to it. So they're two and a half by five inch pieces. We need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 16 of these. I'm just doing four of each color. So let's do the green now. One, two, three, and four. And then we'll do this one. Oh, we already have that one. What else do I have left in greens? I really don't have many greens left. Okay. Cut these. One, two, three, and I guess we'll just put, is there green on one of these? I really don't want to put the yellow here. I think I want to save those for the binding that has the green and purple right there. So I need four more. I guess I am using this. And we'll use this. This one's got green in it. Looks like my corners aren't going to be as good as I wanted them. One, two. It's too matchy matchy. We definitely want the weave to stand out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. We're making four corners. Look at that. Okay. Now we need the two and a half inch squares. So I think this one goes here. Where am I at? Can I see that picture again? I'm very big. I'm I know. I, I can brand. tell just by looking at it. Okay. All right. So we're going to have this here. So a green is going to go here. So I'm going to have two greens. So two of my borders are green. And then we're going to have the yellow and the green down here. And then greenish color there. And there. I guess we're using the yellow as well. <laughs> that is two and a half inch squares now is what we're working with. Two, two, two. Let's put that there. I'm gonna mix them up because there's no way I can have the purple and the without the green. We're just gonna put purple in there. No big deal because we have plenty of purple two and a half inch squares. We're just gonna mix all this up because this is impossible now. We're putting two and a half inch squares now all the way around it. <laughs> so we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Nope, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. 13, 14, 15, and 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 1, 2, 2, 2, 3, and 24, 25, 26, 27, and 28, 9, 30, 31, and 32. So 32 two and a half by two and a half inch squares going around it. And now we're going to piece all this together. Like I said, the rest of everything just gets cut up and it'll be a scrappy two and a half inch. Um, you talk to yourself when the camera's off? Yep, I talk to myself when the camera's off, when the camera's on, I talk to myself. All the time. 
I talk to myself when I'm doing other things too. Not just making quilty stuff. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's make sure that this is correct. I don't understand what you're doing. It seems like you're in your own world. I, I kind of am, and that's why the video itself, the original video, should get watched. <laughs> because that will help all of you guys it's a uh, you know like from here angles and most of it unless it's the time lapse part because some of it's sped up but only because i'm piecing long seams and then they're going to be there's going to be the five inch square top. i'm just making sure real quick that this looks like a woven piece let me look at that picture one more time scotty yeah That goes in, that goes in. It has one there. Okay. All right. I'm doing it correctly. So it goes, the top left corner is a five by five inch square, and that's background. Then there's a two and a half by five of my print, two and a half by five of my background, two and a half by five of my print. Then the second row is two and a half by five of my print. Two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by two and a half, two and a half by two and a half, all prints in that second row. The third row is a two and a half by five background, two and a half by two and a half print. Then there's a two and a half by two and a half background, and then two and a half by two and a half print. And then the fourth row, again, all of this is from the left, which is your own view at your sewing. Then a two and a half by five inch background, two and a half by Two and a half, I mean, not background, um, print, two and a half by two and a half print, two and a half by two and a half print, and two and a half by two and a half print. Because when it sits next to this, the five inch squ uh, pieces are going on the top, and these corners will get put together. So we're going to go ahead now and make our four corners, and then we're going to put the top pieces on here, and then that's it. That's how it goes. It goes quick. So I'm just going to bring all this towards me because I'm going to chain piece the lot of it all which is what I tend to do. All right, here we go. <laughs> Let's make our four corners. Just bring it in, I guess, yeah. I, I, I don't want it right here though. It's gonna bother me being right here because okay, my arm are? is over it. Bring it in right here at the edge of the desk and just face it down. They just don't see me. Okay. They'll just see what I'm piecing, that's all. So the camera is getting moved as by request from all of you. That way you can look in from the backwardsness of me doing things because I don't want the camera next to me. At my shoulder. Is this pad in a PDF in a Facebook group? There is no PDF to this. I never wrote this one's pattern. This one is just me doing my thing, and I wrote it all down on a piece of paper and made a video that everybody um, just pauses writes down what says on the screen and what I say verbally and then pauses and then writes it down and then pauses and writes it down and so on and so forth. That's worked out best. I don't write any of my patterns. Unfortunately, there's only like five total patterns in PDF form that I've ever wrote and most of them are long-winded. Hard to understand and the videos are actually better. This way, that way, this way, that way. Should just chain piece the whole lot of them. I don't know why I'm doing just one, but I guess I'll make just one, show you what it looks like, and then continue with the other three. Oh my goodness, come on, thank you. And that's the fourth one. 
I may have over put pieces here. All right. In, out, and in. And as you can see, everything's together. I can't lose my direction or order. So now I'm just going to put the rows together. All my seams are pressed in opposite directions of each other. Put this one on here. And this is going to get pressed out. So this is getting these three pieces right here is going out away from the middle piece on both of these finger pressing out because they're going in opposite directions. And then this top one is going to go down towards this. I'm trying to remember. Can I see a picture again? Uh -uh. The picture doesn't show me which way it's pressed. Yeah, it's going to get pressed towards the uh, prints. This is just pretty much you guys seeing me make this quilt in real time. So that way you can see for yourself other than a filmed video in real time, how this goes. So here is the, that's the corner unit. So it's pressed towards the prints on this because the unit itself, the big unit, the, the long piece is pressed towards the background. So we want them opposite. That way they nest when we put them together. So that's ready to be pressed, Scotty, but the rest of these, I'm just gonna sew um continuously you ready for the arm? Yeah. The arm. so i'm just going to continuously piece the rest of this now and all my colors the greens and purples are now all mixed up because there wasn't an exact amount of everything it looks good oh but that's okay it'll be plenty fine i already did that let's do it this. looks good no fussy button around there. Start back on the top. Yeah, I over put my pieces down, I think. Which is fine because the excess again goes towards the binding. Back to the top. Yep. So that can just put over there on the side. I do enjoy making quilts like this or repeating something I've made. Um, there's quite a few quilts that I've made that I've repeated more than once because I just love how simple they are. Right. I'm just going to grab the pieces and sew them on in the row. Mix that in. Add this one. Press that down, add this one. Come on, there we go. And press that in and add this one. Yeah. 
Looking good, man. <clears throat> Looking good. They're all like it. Oops, and somehow I broke thread. Look at that. Oh, it's because I ran out of bobbin and then tried to sew with no bobbin. <laughs> That's how you break thread that on my juki. <laughs> it's a good thing I pre-rolled a bunch of bobbins today. Because I knew that I'd be doing some long scenes. Oh, look at that. It's not out it just it got tangled oh it is out okay grab another one put it in the thingamabobber slide it through the slider put it in the snappy hook snap the hook down <laughs> that's a step-by-step -step of how to do it without showing you. <laughs> All right, where was I? This one to this one. I don't know, whatever way it goes, this goes on there. Right on this one. Hopefully everybody's having a good Sunday. I did not nap today, so I'm not in my very best like I normally would if I would have gotten a nap. I really tried, and then I got up and uh, out of bed and ate, and uh, well, let's just say the food did not agree with my belly, so I had to take medicine before even coming on live stream, and now my belly's still messed up. <laughs> well, it's just not my day today, but hopefully you guys are having a better one than me. I am enjoying my time though here at the sewing machine. So that makes it, that makes it worth it. And this one. All right, go back to the top again and put the fourth uh, one on all of these. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finger press these seams real quick. because it's making my life easier to just finger press them real quick. Okay, so I'm just gonna go down the row and add the fourth piece. And all we have to do is sew the five inch strip onto all the border pieces. And then put it together. Sew them onto the quilt. I mean, it's literally that easy. Trying to pay attention here. Back to the top again. It's supposed to be 51 inches by 51 inches or 52. I don't remember. It's either 51 or 52 inch. I don't remember exactly. In the 50s. It's in the 50s, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I over put my pieces down again. Come on. Did so. I really don't. Yeah. What's some other big uh, videos of your own pattern? You have a lot of views. Videos of my own pattern with a lot of views. Um, strings of the illusion. strings of illusion. Yep, that one. Uh, 
Uh, the one where you make the bag? Uh, yep, my bag pattern. Sorry, I decided to swap a piece out. That one a bag pattern anyway. Yeah. Okay, a that piece ain't gonna work. We need to cut this one or something. Um, how you get things done quickly? How I get things done quickly. Yep, that video has a lot of views. Okay, this will work. Put this one here and that one there. I have no idea if these are going to land with the same color in the ends, but if they do, oh well. Because as long as it looks like it's woven. All right, I'm going to separate this unit from this unit and then press these. out in and then I'm just going to put these together I don't know what other videos there's a lot of videos that I have that have um, 200,000 plus views not a lot a lot but some which like is surprising <laughs> yeah. there's, a lot that over there's like there's a lot with over a hundred thousand Probably could have put that next row in, but I'm just going to go ahead and do them one at a time. One about making a table runner. That's yeah, right there's out. a table runner one that's at like 100,000. Yeah. All right, and then this gets pressed towards that way. Here. And this presses towards. Which way did I press it? Towards the inside. Yep. All right, that's ready to be pressed. All right, so this goes. Out. In the iron ready to work. In, out. And wow, this one unit turned out with three of these yellows in it. <laughs> I am not switching them out either. It's just going to stay. My corners and everything is not landing the way I had pictured it in my head. But that's okay. Just finger pressing it out on the next one. You know, as long as all my seams nest and all my pieces are lying flat, I guess it doesn't matter. <laughs> all right, this one together. I'm telling you though, this is so easy to make. Like, I don't just make it look easy. It is easy to do. Like, really easy. You didn't have to care where anything landed like I'm doing with this one. I figured I'd try something different with this one, but that one's ready to be pressed. But it didn't turn out like the amount of pieces didn't come out the way we had hoped. That's okay. If I would have had an equal amount of the colors, it would have probably been better. Or just used only purples or only green or, you know. Yes, it's the beauty of the scrap. Okay, there you go. Frank. It's the what? It's the beauty of the scrappy. Yeah. It's scrappy. And it's good. Okay, come on, Frank. There we go.
right. Let's press this like that. There's your last one of these. And now we're just going to grab our units here. And these guys are now going to go on the top. Hmm? Okay, well, it's literally almost done now. All right, so what I'm going to do, as you can see on the screen, hopefully, okay, is two, there's four pieces that get the piece on the top. There's four pieces total. I'm going to put the small piece at the top with a five inch first, and then I'm going to flip my second one around so that a, oh no, they always land the same. Okay. Looks like it doesn't go the other way. Well, I could make it go the other way. Oh, well, I guess they all go this way. So it doesn't matter. It's just going to go like this. We're just going to sew to the top of all four of these right here. So one of these to each one of these. It's a long seam. Should be pretty easy to do. Make sure it's right sides together. And they should be the exact same length because we cut them at 32 inches. Oh, and I came unthreaded because I came too close to my machine with my little pieces. I was really trying to move these around. Oh, come on. All right, here we go. Let's try to get this on here now. So we're going a little bit over our two hours, but if I wouldn't have been screwing around with where I wanted my colors, we would be. Take your time. You need water? Nope, I have a water. Okay. But I definitely wanted to be done during the video, so. We're going to add the next one in. Again, I'm actually putting it on the bottom because I'm, I don't want to mess with the flipping of seams because the seams like to flip. So I can control it better from this side. And yes, the air conditioner kicked on and my pieces blew off of my desk. All right, next one. Bobbin? Is that why that's doing that? No, I'm not. All right, the camera's going to move so you guys can say hi to the fur baby. Mr. Thumper came in to visit y'all because he has to every single video. I'm going to say hi, Mama. All right. What is Mama doing over there? Yeah, Actually, this time he hasn't stole your chair. Instead, he's sniffing around. All right, press these towards the background, please. And I'll finger press these so that they're mostly pressed by the time you get them. So I'm just finger pressing these before Scott gets them so that makes it easier on him. Since I really can't sew them until they're pressed anyway. Two. 
these I'm pressing towards the background. Yep, he is a crazy kitty. I wonder how many videos or how many views he has if he had his own channel. Yeah, <laughs> Scott just said, how many subscribers would he have if he had his own channel? We've thought about making him his own channel because he does crazy things. The thing is, is I don't let the camera run 24-7. So it's really hard. I have to actually turn the camera on to catch him doing something, you know? And he does weird stuff. Like, he is a weird kit, uh, a kit, kit, cat. And I would have to catch all his funny meows. He makes some seriously silly meowing sounds. All right, here we are. We're going to grab the quilt top. We need to lay it out. And this is where Scotty can put the camera back where it was originally. Oh, you got Scotty doing... Too many things at the moment. You just wait. Just wait. Well, I'm not waiting. So I'm going to put green on the green sides and purple on the purple side. How old is Thumper? Thumper is 10. So no. 11. No, 11. He's 11 now. That's right. He turned 11 this year. All right. So purple is on the purple or on the green side. So purples are going to go here and here okay and then green is going to go here and down here on this side okay, now, where do you want the camera now way back where it was Today? yeah can i still leave it up yep all right so we're going to lay this kind of out so you can see there's going to be a purple on each side like this and the green on this side. And then we have my four corners, which go in that way. And those are just going to be random. So I'm going to start with attaching a green to this side on this end and a purple to that side or vice versa, because I like to seal seams first. So we're going to go with these two sides first. I'm just going to place the top and bottom. And we want to make sure that our background fabric faces outward. So I'm going to go ahead and sew this one first because it's right here in my face. So this one's going to go on first. You can make sure that everything's the right size. And it should be. Everything was cut to 32 inches. That was our magic number. And make sure you take a magic number as well. Do they not see me sewing now? A little bit. Um, Why? No, it's fine. I can stay facing down. It doesn't need to be on my face. stitch and then I'm going to just lay this out so that I don't mess anything up and I'm going to take this right here and put it right sides together with this side again the batik or your back your prints should be touching the background and your other background should be facing out All right, so we're just going to line this up. Everything's the right the side. Keep it up here. If I can keep it up here, it's elongated now. So I backstitched first. No pulling or tugging. 
just lining it up. Huh? Would you quilt this one on your juke? I am not quilting it on this juke. I own a long arm for a reason. I do not sit in free motion anymore. The only things that I quilt sit down is when I'm doing quilted bags or little tiny wall hanging projects. Other than that, 90% of everything I quilt is on my long arm because I bought it. I paid a lot of money for it, so I'm going to use it. I, I just can't anymore. The sit down, even sitting here to sew, drives my body crazy. It drives my neck and shoulders and my back really crazy to sit in free motion quilt on a sit down. I don't know what it is, but sitting down to quilt for me does not work with my MS. All right, I'm going to press this real quick. Nope. Nope. All right, and then we're going to attach our corners to the corners of those two final pieces. After this piece is pressed real quick. <clears throat> Somebody's definitely having a party out there. I can hear outside and there's music playing out there. Somebody's having a Sunday party. Can't be football though because it's not football time. Summertime. I don't think there's football in the summer. Oh, it's Oh, it did. Hmm, interesting. A lot of our neighbors have uh, football parties when there's football games for their favorite teams. All right, so the sides are on. There you can see, sides are on. So now we're going to take, this one goes on the bottom. This one's gonna go on the top. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna attach our not so perfect because we had to mix the colors, corners on here. So one is gonna go here, one is gonna go here, and then we're gonna do one on each side of this one as well. But I am gonna swap this one out because those two colors are exactly the same at that edge. So we'll, all those two colors are the same, same as well. Those are the same, let's try this piece. <laughs> Sorry, I have the hiccups now. So I'm going to go on that side of that. Let's make sure that these are the same. And then we'll come over to this other side and look at it and make sure that those are where we want them. So those are where we want those. But if we want to switch anything around, we're going to do it now. So we're going to lay this here. I have little pieces of fabric just everywhere right now, too. So this one's going to go here. We're going to add this right here. None of those match. Good, good, good. And then add this one here. And none of those match. Good. Okay. This is perfect. Just like this. So I'm going to attach this to this side real quick. Do you have any idea how to help fix tension on a baby lock? <coughs> uh, the tension dial on a baby lock. Um, just turn it uh, down. If you're trying to bring... You're going to loosen it if you're trying to bring your bobbin to the top, and you're going to tighten it righty-tighty if you're trying to put your top back in your bottom. I think. I think that's how it works on those machines. Yeah, you'd have to go online and look, though. Yeah, I don't have a baby lock, though, so I don't know. It's the same as every other machine. Do you ever get burned out sewing? I do get burned out sewing. I haven't sewn in days because I've been in burnout. So that's probably why I'm all over the place today, <laughs> because I really um, haven't been sewing, so I've not been in the mood. All right, this is going to go finger press towards the um, corner. I'm going to add this side on. Let's make sure that it's in the right direction, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and add this side on here. You worked all week, though. Right? Yeah. You 
you did a client quilt this week? I long arm quilted this week. Okay, that's a bill. So oh, and I arm. bound a quilt this week, and that you was it. Long arm quilted, you bind it. And you cut a bunch of pieces. Yeah, but I way. wasn't in the mood to sew. Okay, I'm just saying. Yeah, I made pre-cuts this week. That was what I sewed you this sound week. You like you sat around staring at the wall. You oh, could, no. I you didn't. Did other stuff. I didn't do any sewing. I did other things other than sewing. I wasn't in the sewing mood. All right. I'm just going to finger press this out. And we're going to put it back where it goes. And we're going to attach it to this side before we lose where anything is supposed to be. So I'm going to go ahead now and put it right sides together on this side. You can pin it if you need at this time, but I'm, again, not pinning because I rarely pin. And I'm going to just start sewing it on. And my nested seams will be what is my guide to stay on track. So I sew to one seam and then nest the next one, sew to it, and then go to the next one until they all have been sewn. I'm going to go ahead and come down to that next seam that's going to be nesting. I'm going to make sure everything stays lined up. I'm just holding it down here. good to have a rolling chair to be able to do this kind of stuff so that way you can back yourself up from your machine. All right, and then literally at the end now. So I'm going to go ahead and pass this to Scott to press it back and away. So it's just going to be pressed back towards the batiks, just like this. I'm just going to finger press it and then pass it to him. There's this really long seam. And while he's doing that, I'm going to sew those four or two pieces onto the edge of that, so this long seam right there. So I'm going to go ahead and put this end on first. Can I move your Good end? Yep. Do okay, so I'm going to sew this one on and then I'll make sure that this is the correct direction and sew the next end on. Have you done a video on the video quilting the butterfly quilt? Um, I can, but most people don't watch my long arm quilting videos and that's why I don't film them anymore. Yeah, they actually, they actually get more complaints and thumbs down than they get likes and watches. I lose it's, people on long arm. I lose subscribers on all those videos. So for those of you who loved watching my long arm videos, I'm very sorry, but they don't make any money. They don't get watched like they should, and they definitely get lots of bad reviews. <laughs> Comments get deleted because they're so bad. Yeah, you're do well with long arm Yeah. All right, so I'm making sure this is correct before I sew it. I don't know what it is that they don't like. I'm, I don't have to describe what I'm doing. You can visibly see it when I'm long arm quilting it, so I don't know what needs to be changed about it. I even tried talking through it, and um, it still didn't change anything. All right, I'm going to go ahead and finger press this one out, and then we're going to attach it to this other side of the quilt, and then this quilt top is complete. Are you ready for this? Yep. Yeah, I can hand you so that. I'm just going to take this last end right here, put this last seam right sides together. Everything is where it needs to be, right sides together. And I'm just going to turn it to its side and sew it. And then we'll have a completed quilt top in however long this video has been on. Minus the first 20 minutes of talking and screwing around. <laughs> so you can see that it's really easy to do. And it's fun to do. It's definitely fun to make this one. That's why I chose to do this one again today. Because it's a distraction 
for me, it's fun for you, fun for me, and there was no extra specialty cutting. It was just the charm packs. So, okay, I'm going to reach down here while I can and find my first seam that needs nested to make sure everything just stays nice and lined up. Stop it in that seam. Okay, before I reveal this to you guys, I'm going to go ahead and press the whole thing as fast as I can. And then you'll get to see the finished. It's not my way. Yep, so two hours. It took two hours to make this. I saw a long ah. video where you were teaching us some of the stitches and patterns. Will you be able to still make a few of those? I can try, but I can't draw out all the patterns because um, that challenges my brain too much. <laughs> to draw them out and then show you how to quilt them. But yeah, I could make some more of those. Just giving the quilt its last and final quick press. And then I will have Scott put the camera upright and then you can see the whole thing. The throat space is nine inches, I think, on the TL2010Q. From needle to the um, curve. Part area. My long arm's 18. This one probably. It's uh, nine inches from the needle here to the inner part of the. I forgot what that's called right there. The hearth or whatever you want to call it. All right, it's ready for me to show them. Okay, you want me to hold up no, I want you to With turn the camera. camera. I can hold this all by myself. I'm going to look at how big it is before I show them, though, really quickly. It's a complete square. It's 52. It's 52 inches, so I was wrong about the 51 number. It's 52. You said 51 or 52. You I said 51 or 52. There it is. Ta-da! The two-hour two-hour quilt and it probably wouldn't have took as long if I would have just laid all the fabric some which way and not tried this whole green on one side and purple on the other thing. <laughs> I like it. Can you see the whole thing in the view? Yeah, pretty oh. darn much. Okay. That extreme bottom covered by the desk, so I'd have to move that camera behind the desk, but yeah, pretty much the whole darn thing. There we go. So now I have a 52 inch quilt and you can make it bigger. You can add borders to it. So say I have a purple batik in, in my stash. I can go around it with a two and a half of my background one more time to just widen that space all the way around and stop this. And then I can take a five inch or six inch border of a purple, which actually I kind of want to do now, <laughs> now that I say it out loud. But I can take another five or six inch border to finish it off and make it even bigger. So that would add 10 more inches. So it'd be 62 inches, you know. So many options, many options. But I like that the at least the sides have the mostly green on the purple side and mostly purple on the green side. So that worked out good. It's the four corners that kind of got a little messed up, but. There we have it. So I went over on today's video, but at least you guys got to see the whole entire quilt made in one real, in real life, right now, right before your eyes video. So it wasn't filmed, no pre-edited anything. 
So there we have it. They like the colors. They're saying they compliment them and well. They're, they're liking them. It can be done. I'm trying to find, oh, here it is right here, where the yellow pieces are. Does it hide out from far away, or does they actually show? I don't know. Does it look like it's still weaving, or does it blend too much with this? Oh. What do you say? There's what it looks like on camera. Oh yeah, it's washed out. The only reason why I could see it on camera is because the seam allowance is in, in it. In person, it looks good. Yeah. On camera, it's different. The colors don't pick up as well. Yeah. Yep. The camera doesn't pick up those colors, guys. But there we have it. All right. I'm gonna go ahead and get off of here. I have. Well, took up question. too much of your time. What, what, what's the question? What, what are you going to use for backing? I don't know backing at this point. Any more questions? Uh, you're going fast. He's, he's trying to keep up with them. <laughs> I'm trying to read. They're not a question. I don't think so. Yeah, I, once I get to this stage of a quilt top, I still decide if I want to make it bigger, which I think I'm going to do. I'm going to go around it probably with two and a half inch of this, the, which is the border fabric or background fabric. I'll turn it into a, you know, the first border. And then I'm gonna find a purple in my stash. I think I have one that's similar to like this one. I could even do a purple. I don't know if I have a green, but I do have a mixed purple and green probably. And then just put it around it and bam, look at that. It'll be bigger. Oh, it'd be bigger and funner. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, thank you all for hanging out for two plus hours, and I appreciate it. And don't forget to leave me a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe if you're new and you haven't already. Uh, until next week or whenever I feel like filming again, I'll see you guys. Bye-bye. Good night.